Good morning, November 24, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Today is day number 28 into week number 14. It's almost the end of the semester, except for one more class next Monday. And today we have a full house of speakers to make their speeches of the semester. What have I learned? So, to save some time, let's just get started. So, thank you very much for coming back to today's class. Today, as you can see, is day number 28 and uh, November the 24. According to the schedules of the speeches of the semester, I would like to call the attention of the foreign students to get them ready. Particularly, you must get your PowerPoint ready in the sign up page. And according to this record, we have uh, actually a full house, seven not fully filled by seven students today. Now, in case any student who are not ready to do it, I'm going to pull the student from the wait list um, to do your snot. Okay? Um, it's very important to give students a chance, the all the chance they have. The first student is Rina. Are you ready, Rina? Okay, now your PowerPoint is here, so let me open up your PowerPoint. You have your full 10 minutes, okay? To present your work. So here we go, Rina. Thank you. In general, the traditional approach to learning is focused on mastery of contents and with least in phrase on the development of skills and the nurturing of inquiring attitudes. And the career system of education is teacher-centric, with the teacher focused on giving out information about what is known, and students are the receiver of information and the teacher is the dispenser. What much of the assessment of the learner is focused on the importance of one right answer. And traditional education is much is more concerned with preparation for the next grade level and in school success than with having a student learn to learn throughout the life. And the inquiry approach is more focused on using and learning content as a means to develop information processing and problem solving skills. And the system is more student central with the teacher as a facilitator of learning. learning. And there's more emphasis on how we come to know and least on what we know. And students are more involved in the construction of knowledge through the active involvement. The more interest and engaged students are by a subject or project, and the easier it will be for them to construct in deep knowledge. And learning becomes an almost uh, infertilis when something fascinates students and reflects their interests and goals. So here is a basic map uh, about the IBL. And first is students need to ask the question and then investigate and create the problem or something else. And then discussing with their teammates. And also uh, last process is reflect. So here is knowledge and topic, and I select some uh, most important topic in this semester. And first one is what is information technology, and what is blog, what is information literacy, and what is social responsibility in the information, and what is the difference between tagging and taxonomy. So next, I will choose the question uh, to. Uh, you uh, use the idea to solve this question. So I choose what is the social responsibility in the information age. 
and the first step I need to do is ask and find a definition about this question. And so social responsibility is an effective framework and suggests that an entity, be it an organization or individual, has an obligation to act for the benefit of society at large. So this definition is come from the internet. And information age, the information age, also known as the computer age, uh, is a period in human history characterized by the shift from traditional industry that the in industrial revolution brought through the industrial nation to an economy based on information communication. And the second step I would do is investigate by myself. So uh, government, they, they, uh, they root is supervising their country and employers should management the company and each citizen in the country has a different role of themselves and they all have the job and duty in the society. The third step I need to discuss with my classmates. And so uh, I have divided two parts. The first one is advantage and the second one is disadvantage. So advantage is Businessmen will use the information technology to improve their working production and student and teacher can use the technology on learning. So the disadvantage is information piracy should be considered in this uh, problem. And the third step is reflection. So uh, why we need in the information industry it means maintain and balance between the needs in academic information needs of business and how to respect the information piracy. Information can spread into different areas, such as especially business should take their responsibility to keep their commercial information. And each different age should take the social responsibility on their areas. Businessmen will use the information technology to improve their working production, and students and teachers can use the technology on learning. And therefore, I think everyone has a strong connection with internet. We all should take the responsibility on, on our electronic work. So this is the main process to use the IPR to solve the questions. And the second one is SIL, which means the self-regulated learning. So this is, uh, there, are main, there are five main steps in here. The first one is goals, which means uh, the purpose for studying this topic. And the second one is plan, uh, how to carry out this topic and how to step by step to solve the question. And the, the third one is analyze, and then conclusion and share and discuss. Now, also I will choose a talk, topic to use this way to solve the question. So I choose what is a problem. First step, I need to set a goal. And after understanding the topic of work, it should be set up my own work. So this is my goal to study this topic. And the second step is plan. So make the definition clear. Uh, a blog is a type of website or part of a website. Blogs are usually maintained by an individual with the regular entries of commentary and some description of events or other materials such as photo and video. And the second one is I need to find information and I can search it in internet. And the second and the last one is time management. The third step is analyze. So uh, I analyze the type of the blog. And there are different types of a block. Sometimes it might for individual, commercial, or business. And the second one is uh, benefit. The benefits of block are very easier to create and maintain. And to set up a block, it can just take a little as 10 minutes. And after creating your block, all you are required to do is to provide many fresh content as you can on a regular basis. And the disadvantage about the block is some information piracy, piracy should not be posted online, and someone may steal your information. The first step in conclusion. So most blogs are interactive, allowing visitors to leave the comment there. A typical blog 
combine the test image and link to other blocks. And the ability of reader to leave the comment is an interactive format is an important part of many blocks. And blocks are like a keynote speech where the speaker and which means blocker is in control of the discussion but allow the question and comments from the audience. In the context of business communication, these are often used to talk with the marketplaces and to join the conversation. And the fifth step, uh, I want to share and discuss with my classmates. So, uh, block VS forwards. So, block are like a keynote speech with, where the speaker is the content of the discussion that allow questions and comments from the audience. Blog are general often altered by one individual and sometimes teams. The forums are like a social research. When everyone is at equal level, level they all can discuss with others. It has many communication tools allow everyone to start a topic and everyone to respond to one. The last one is PBL, uh, which means problem-based learn learning. And inquiry-based, which is referred to IBL, and also based on the desired learning outcome. And cooperative and collaborative learning is a main um, process in PBL. And project basis learning and case study. So in this way, there are two roles of the teacher and the student. And role of the teacher is uh, they need to design the problem and investigate and gather the resources and also need to uh, do the model and coach their students. And what is so, uh, the role of the student is they need to confirm the problem and define the problem and also need to design a plan to solve the problems. And the last step is construct the potential solution and the last one is share and discuss. So this is our, this, so this is our presentation. Okay, thank you, Karen, for giving us a very uh, detailed and a very systematic step-by-step -step process to learn in this semester. Thank you very much. You can see that, uh, that Karen had actually developed her own system to present the idea within each of these big topics. And that is a very good sign of your personal development. Okay, so thank you very much for, uh, no, this is Rita. <laughs> that is Karen. Oh, says, you look so much alike. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Uh, that is very good. Okay, so the, the second person in the, in, the, in the row who's going to present is CO, CO Coco. Have you upload to PowerPoint? Okay, then you will lose a chance in that case. Now, let's go to the next person. So you must got your PowerPoint ready before we can give you the 10 minutes. Hi, Jay. Have you got your PowerPoint ready? It's, uh, I can see your name here, but where is the PowerPoint? Somewhere down there? It's up or down? Down, okay. Let's see. Got 10 minutes. Thank you very much. So, today, about technology and life, and we thought I had learned. So, out of the, this uh, past few months, I have learned a lot of things, but I will choose some topic that I interest first. 
I will talk about what is the web technology 2.0. Uh, web technology 2.0 is the second stage of development of the worldwide web, a characteristic uh, especially by the shape from the static web page to dynamic or user content and grow of social media. And before the web point, uh, web 2.0, there's also a web 1.0. So, so it's the short form of web point, one, uh, web 1.0 is the lead above. And uh, web 2.0 is uh, viable in the world wide web. And, and now we have the web 3.0 is the S security above page of Worldwide web with the dynamic applications, interactive service, and machine to machine interaction. So, first, I will talk about social network. Social network is the use of the current website and application to interact with other users or to find people with a similar interest to oneself. And it's a Social statement make up of a set of a social actor such as an individual or organization. Set of dynamic ties and other social interact between actors. And the social network perspective provides a set of methods for analyzing the structures of social social and titles as well as quality of theory theories explaining the pattern observed in these structures. And the second one I talk about is a blog. A blog is a discussion of an information website managed by a World Wide Web considering of a discrete of friend information diary style text entries. Posts are typically displayed in reverse chronological orders so that most of recent posts appear first at the top of the web page. So I will talk about the advantage and disadvantage. The advantage of blog is that enable you enable you to write down your thoughts on anything that you in interest you. And the second one is the very quick and uh, easy to set up. Don't need much technology, uh, technological knowledge. And the third is uh, easy and quick, quick uh, to update or add new posts. The fourth is that people can leave comment on your blog. And the last one, if you want to read other people's blogs, there are literally millions to choose from. Besides the advantage, if you use too much blog, they also have a disadvantage which is uh, affect you. So the disadvantage of blog is whatever you uh, publish is available for everyone to see. If you write down the post in anger, you might regret it later. And the second one is people blogs may be contained in accurate information. So it means some personal is my uh, fake information. And the third one is blog can be time consuming. Finding time to write regular update can become a chore. People may leave good or inappropriate comments. And the last one, there are many really do blogs around. You may have to look at many before you fire some work leading. And uh, the next one, I'm going to talk about attacking. <coughs> attacking is a non technical keyword or term assigned to a piece of information such as an uh, internet bookmark, digital image, or computer file. 
This kind of mental data helps describe an item and allow it to be found again. By browsing or searching, tagging are generally choose informally and personally by the item created by its reviewer depends on the system. And I'm going to talk about the advantage of tags. The advantage of tags are that they are extremely flexible and easy for the user to use. That means it's easy to tag a bit of data as you put, put in, a, sorry, input in with any type of label that you may want to. You will, of course, normally be given a choice of tags that you have already created. But if you don't find what you want, you can quickly add a new one. Now I'm going to talk about the disadvantage of tags. There are two technical disadvantages of tags. First is the homonies and second the simonies. The first one homonies mean inadvertently using the same tag for different alternate meaning and extremely might be accountant. That's, that means that a company is a firm of accountants or it could be that context blow is accountant. With a company, within a company, if you are created a report based on an accountant intending this to be accountancy firms, you might also get on the accountants with a multiple factoring company as well. The second one is Simonis, which means the user uses different words or ways to type data which has the same meaning as the other text. An example might be independent finance advisor and IFA. If you then create a report on IFA, it would not include independent finance advisor and will be incomplete. And the last one I'm talking about is the uh, photo sharing. Photo sharing is the image sharing or photo sharing is the publishing or transfer of user digital, digital photos online. Image sharing website after service such as uploading, hosting, managing, and sharing of the photo. This, this function is provided for website and application that facilitate the upload and display of image. The term can also be loosely applied to the use of online photo galleries and a set up that managed by individual users, including photo blogs, share. Sharing means that other user can view but not necessarily download image and also the user can be search different copyright option for their image. So now I'm going to talk about the photo sharing, the advantage and the disadvantage. So the photo sharing, they have a lot of uh, advantage. First is that fast, easy, free. It helps you to store documents. Many people can review it at the same time. You can get the feedback and it won't get close and you can accept it any way you want as long as you have the internet. And the disadvantage, like, you need that internet to connect, to see the photo. And the second is that people can still public stuff and can share it to anyone. And the last, sometimes things might go too far just like it did with Amontanto. So this is my difference. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, my day. You can see from the way my day would like to express her learning from the semester, he is a content-oriented guy. He always zeroed in directly on the specific contents, okay? So, 
you can see the differences between different students in picking up the learning throughout the semester. So let's move back to the top of the list and see who's the next person. Okay, you can see that uh, the next person is Aris. Have you uploaded your PowerPoint? Look at that, this is according to the order of your sign up. You see that today is the 24th, right? The last time you signed up before me is Selena's turn. Oh, okay. Because you were, you missed, all right? So, so you're willing to give it to Selena first. So Selena, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, have you uploaded your PowerPoint yet? Yeah. Okay, let me just go to your PowerPoint first. Let me know where is your PowerPoint, okay? So you have exactly 10 minutes time, Selena. Thank you very much. Turn on the microphone. Okay. And third, what is Web 2.0? From these three topics, let me briefly introduce what is it. For learning contract number one, I've chosen what is information literacy as my topic. The definition is that to be able to know the ability to know when there is a need for information to be able to identify, locate, evaluate, and effectively use that information for the issue of problem at hand. Being able to know the skill of information literacy, this is helpful for both students and workers. Second, I have what is, uh, what, what is a wiki as my topic. Wiki is defined as a freely create and edit web page content using any web browser. There are other websites under Wiki, for example, Wikipedia, Wikispaces, Wikimedia, and OpenStreetMap. However, when we are using Wiki, we have to essential to pay attention as it is not 100% accurate, but, but we can use for a brief understanding on your topic. Lastly, I got what is Web 2.0 from my learning content number three. Web 2.0 is a worldwide website which works well with other products, systems, and devices. There are many 
platforms under the structure of Web 2.0, for example, wikis, blogs, tagging, and social bookmarking. And, and the biggest advantage of Web 2.0 when comparing to Web 1.0 is that having a lot more freedom in writing. This implies the importance of the democracy. Except learning the topics from those free learning contracts, I've also learned the structure of the journal the whole IA, from observation to interpretation and, and lastly application. Also, the cooperation within a team is also important. Without our mutual understanding between humans, we wouldn't be able to complete contract learning contract number two and three. Finally, the themes of the course. There are three themes from the opening to the last of the semester. They are in query-based learning, self-regulated learning, and problem-based learning. For the query-based learning, it is defined as starting by posting questions, problems, or scenarios rather than simply presenting established facts. This can help us to identify and research issues and questions to develop our knowledge. For instance, when we are doing our learning contracts, we will have to do our proposal first, then our journal. From our proposal, we will raise three questions about our selected topics. This is what we said in query-based learning. The questions that we raise are our doubts. Then we will have a direction what to resource for our journal. Second, Self-regulated learning emphasizes autonomy and control by individuals who monitors, directs, and regulates actions towards goals of information acquisition, expanding experience, and self-improvement. In university, there are no sufficient of time for professors to have lectures for students before the end of the semester. So it is necessary for students to have the habit of self-regulated learning to do research by themselves without any push from professors. Students should have the motivation to learn by themselves. Lastly, problem-based learning. Problem-based learning is that students learn about a subject through the experience of solving an open-ended problem found in trivial material. The process does not focus on problem solving with a defined solution, but it allows for the development of other desirable skills and attributes. It involves working in small groups of learners. Each student takes on a role within the group that may be formal or informal, and the role often rotates. For example, I'm the group tracker and timekeeper in the team. I'm responsible for reminding the teammates of the due date and tracking the progress of the assignment. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Selena. It's a very um, comprehensive indeed. It, uh, it recounts a lot of the process of your working out what's best for your learning in this semester. Thank you again, Selena. Thank you. So the next person after Selena, according to the list here, let's go back to the beginning. Right, so today is the twenty fourth. I think it's Karen. Yes, I think it's Karen. Yes, Karen, are you ready? So it's your PowerPoint uploaded already? Yes. Okay, let me just open up your PowerPoint. Thank you very much.
from the from the from the uh, picture we can see um, um, ninety percent. Uh, we can remember ninety ninety percent of what we we both to and say say by um, doing a dramatic uh, presentation and doing the real things. So I think uh, learn to learn mode is uh, the same. It is just like the same. Um, as for learning contract one, and my topic is what is information privacy, and we and when, what we need to do is uh, uh, online learning journal an uh, individual proposal, a uh, pair discussion forum, and individual discussion PowerPoint, and I learned that the definition of in uh, information privacy is that information privacy is a privacy um, of personal information and usually uh, related to personal data stored on computer systems. And the reason why I choose this topic is that information privacy is strongly so associated with our life. Information privacy involves in many parts of our life, such as a medical record, financial data, and business related to information and website uh, data. With the number of personal information uh, uh, increasing, information privacy has become the most notable privacy in information, uh, information society. I think it is because information privacy plays an important role in our life. Um, being bound up with our lives, people now pay more and more attention to the rights of, of, uh, of information privacy. And I have learned uh, from the learning culture one, uh, I have learned that the definition of information privacy, information privacy is of great importance to information sharing and the application of protecting information privacy and the challenge of data privacy and solution. And, um, and during the learning contract one, most of the time I learn individually. Uh, uh, and most of the time I learn individually because it's the first time for me to finish the assignment. I find it hard to finish it alone and I, feel, uh, I felt quite helpless. I can say it's a challenge for me to complete all the assignment by myself at that time. Because I have little understanding of the assignment, I spend a lot of time to finish all this work. Um, and in learning contract two, my topic is what is a block, and my journal topic is what is a block. And my, but my proposal, uh, my pair proposal topic is how do block and wiki affect people's life. And from um, and what I need to do is a uh, uh, online learning journal, a pair proposal, pair discussion forum, pair uh, proposal discussion outlook, individual uh, re reflective blog and pair presentation and Q&A voice record. And I learned that the introduction of blog is a, in, uh, a blog is a discussion or uh, inform informational website published on uh, a worldwide uh, web consisting of the three things. And often informal Often in the informal day, a diary style has in times. And the reason why I chose this topic in proposal is that um, there are there are a number of users. Oh, sorry. As we all know, uh, the reason why I chose this topic is, uh, is that as we all know, there are a number of. Uh, user using blog and wiki every day, and they both play an, <coughs> an important role in our life, uh, providing people with a lot of information. Um, meanwhile, the, the problem which uh, brings by blog and wiki cannot be ignored. With a sea of information on blog and wiki, people are easily to be misled. Um, 
you are, uh, and also they have both negative effects for pe uh, two people, for example, the cyberbullying on blog and the individualism on wiki. So uh, me and uh, I and Selena have combined our topic uh, into how do blog and wiki affect people's life and be, uh, we want to uh, explore um, the, the negative effect of uh, our topic. Uh, of blog and wiki. And I have learned that uh, the introduction of blog and the scope and application of blog, the reform of blog, personal uh, safety on blog, and cyberbullying on blog. Uh, during learning contract two, I did my assignment with my partner and a member of another group. Also, I have already also I have already know how to make a PowerPoint, uh, a PowerPoint which based on a proposal and know how to write a journal and proposal. So I find it easier to finish all my uh, all this assignment compared with uh, learning contract one uh, bec uh, because we have all, uh, we have teamwork with each other. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, peer, dis uh, peer presentation and Q&A voice record is the most challenging part of the assignment uh, because it's quite difficult to prepare a presentation in such a short time. But I learned that cyberbullying is, a, uh, cyberbullying is the main thing that I have learned. I have a deeper understanding of cyberbullying. Cyberbullying can happen, in, uh, happen 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Uh, and reach a person even uh, when he or she is alone. And it can, have, uh, it can happen any time of the day or night. Cyberbullying is a bullying that takes place um, using electronic technology. In conclusion, from learning contract two, I have learned how to, how to have teamwork with others and learn the issue of uh, cyberbullying. Uh, and from learning contract three, my uh, individual journal topic is um, what is uh, what is social networking, and our team topic is uh, what is, what are the impacts of tech in Web 2.0, um, and what we need to do is an online learning learning journal, a team proposal, team discussion forum, team collaborative report, and team collaborative uh, report PowerPoint. And I'm the lead, a team leader. I'm a team leader, and I distribute the assignment to my teammates. And my job, um, uh, uh, and the reason why we choose this team topic is that um, we can uh, we can see that uh, blog and wiki <coughs> social bookmarking are all the useful function of Web 2.0. Uh, while they all uh, make the make use of tagging to link to more information which make up themselves a more successful tool. And I have learned that um, what is a, what is Web 2.0 and how does it apply in, uh, to our life? And what is the difference among a Web 2.0, what Web 2.0, Web 1.0 and Web 2, uh, 3.0? And what are they? Um, uh, and what? Uh, and why is tagging useful in Web 2.0? And what are the pros and cons of it? As for learning contract three, I can say that it's the second difficult learning contract among all of them. Um, the most challenging part is the team report. Uh, it took a lot of time to complete it because it's uh, quite uh, complicated to finish. It requires great journal and uh, discussion uh, conclusion. Uh, because, uh, but I think it is acceptable to do all this job with another three members. Uh, I have learned that tagging has made uh, the other web tour in Web 2.0 much more easier and handy which is important in people's life today. Um, and that is my presentation. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much, Karen. And actually, uh, I very much appreciate that in each of the important items that you uh, mentioned along your way to learn in this semester, you include very clearly your personal reflection. This is very important because this is a very good way to manage how you go forward before you really consolidate what you have done. Uh, this is important in the context of what we call the portfolio. So thank you very much. Now let's get back to the, uh, the forum to see who's the next person to do the speech. Okay, after Karen, it should be, uh, if it's not Harris, let's go down a little bit. It should be Tiffany. Are you ready? Thank you. Let me make sure that I open up your PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you very much.
space candidates, which, which would benefit them from the knowledge and information they acquire throughout the internet. Uh, the first steps before offering everyone a computer can be something like starting a course that actually them the knowledge and about how to operate a computer and how to obtain useful sources when surfing. And the reason why it has to be because uh, it is the right for everyone to explore more as what most of the people have taken advantage of the internet. Also, uh, the access to the internet is vitally important if there is an emergency. Uh, I think it can add us a lot, life like saving people's lives. And in the question two, I have combined my individual topic or expanding with my peers topic what is for the sharing to form the pair topic. How to build up the relationship between full sharing and happy. Uh, before we discuss their relationship, I will briefly explain what are they. Uh, photo, share, photo sharing is the publishing or transfer of our user digital photos online, and tagging is the keyword description attached by site authors to identify image or text within their site as and categories or topics. Uh, the relationship between photo sharing and tagging is a two way process. Uh, they are connected to each other. While the share photos are that they are visible to a large population of internet users. The times they can be viewed is much more than before they are tagged. Suppose a poster of a coming Christmas is posted on social network site with the tagging related to Christmas information. Uh, with this tagging, the Christmas party is more likely to be displayed in, uh, in the public. And at the same time, people are more likely to notice this party when searching with this tagging. And in this case, a shared photo with text play a role in disseminating the message and people can reach to their purpose without a waste of time. So the relationship between photo sharing and tagging is such a way for them, which they can, uh, they are working together to achieve a shared aim. And the outcome can be considered as the photo is known to others when tagging and people know it from text. The things I have learned from the learning content too is that uh, while photo sharing and tagging makes our life more convenient, there still exists disadvantage. And tagging has been regarded as commercial strategy today. I have an example of my own experience. I have been many times tagged to the screen post on Instagram, which are the post of business products. Uh, and when I want to find some photos through text, uh, there are a large amount of Post coming, post coming out which are a few relevant with the text I search. It can be said that the tagging is in a way abusive. Tagging is, tagging is considered a separate way to attract others' attention and reach the goal of advertising. So that I think the disadvantage for about my photo sharing with text is that people will be bothered and offended by the related post. Uh, in learning culture three, I think uh, the things I learned from collaboration are more than what have I learned from the team topic. So I would like to share what has I learned from teamwork. Uh, there are five meaningful things I have learned. They are communication, uh, diversification, which is just com com by combination of different points of views and acceptance to be a good listener and overcoming difficulties. Uh, it's, clear, it's clear to me the outcome of working on the will never be that great as working in a team. Even though there are these problems to communicate ideas and also plans to others, but it's our time to check our staff to be a good listener and to take suggestions of different points of views. And sometimes we may think that our own ideas uh, are good enough, but after trying to li listen to others, ours can be improved and uh, strengthened through adding a knowledge on the knowledge from others. So this is how the team topic comes from. It comes from it comes from the uh, com it comes from the combined ideas of everyone of us. Uh, the one last thing uh, I have learned is inquiry based learning. Uh, it's and seeking for true information or knowledge. It's not by posing questions or problems rather than simply pushing a single path to knowledge. I have learned most from this learning method, uh, from learning culture one to three. We have to raise at least three questions concerning the related topic. Uh, through thinking and questioning, it enables me to think more about
out of the topic, not just about what is the content of the topic. And through these questions, I will I could explore more than what have I learned in this course. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. We thank you very much for your presentations. And I'm very much impressed by your last comments that in this course, you have the opportunity to ask questions. You think a lot to ask the appropriate question for the specific topic. You need to investigate. And that is a very interesting thing to do. OK, if I remember correctly, the next person should be Aris. OK, so have, is your PowerPoint ready? Okay, let's uh, double check. Refresh. And then it's, uh, you just upload it, right? It should be somewhere in the end. major and interest, but after the, this course, I found that there are a lot of uh, knowledge and learning that can apply to my future study, which is not I expected. So here is what I'm going to cover in my PowerPoint. They are the purpose of this course and the learning contract one to three, and my selected topics and journals, and finally the skills and performance I had and also the overview. So first of all, I had a look on the purpose of the course, which is in the syllable on Moodle, and then I found there are basically four types of learning skills that applied by the professor. And they are inquiry-based learning, which is started by posing questions, problems or scenarios, rather than simply presenting established facts or portraying a smooth path to knowledge. And the second one is self-related learning. 
and self-related learning is actually about um, students are guided by thinking, others thinking, planning, monitoring, progress against a standard. And then third one is problem-based learning. Problem-based learning means that students can learn about a subject through the experience of solving and open-ended problems. And the last one is integrative learning, which is a learning theory describing a movement toward integrated lesson, which helps the students to make connections across the curriculum. And through this course, um, we should be expected to explore the latest free and inexpensive web tools, and as, as well as learn the category of information technology, and knowledge society, ethics, and social responsibilities. So here is my selected topics. Uh, in this semester, I have chosen what is web technology and its impact in life, and what is knowledge society, and etc. And among all these topics, I have chosen three of them which I think is the most impressive and what I have learned the most from them. And now I would like to introduce the topic Web 2.0, which is the most important content has been run through in this course. So Web 2.0, as I know, it leads to an era of online interaction and also brought the arrival of online collaboration. Web 2.0 is a great platform that enables the user to deal with information and exchange information with efficiency. As what we have learned taught in this course, there are lots of convenience and useful web tools are provided by Web 2.0. For example, very commonly, we always use Wiki, YouTube, Twitter, and photo sharing sites, and as well as social bookmarking sites. And those common web tools are all invention from Web 2.0, and they have completely changed people's ways of life and make our life become more convenient. In addition, Web 2.0 is a new way of collect and making information. By using the tools provided by Web 2.0, editing and sharing become very user daily and allow us to seek for relevant information more easily and everyone can possibly become the creator or editor. It has made the information on the internet more accessible and comprehensive. And the other topic I chose is information literacy, which I found this skill is greatly influenced my future learning as well as my future career. First, Information literacy is a set of abilities requiring individuals, which, which including DISC or VDL. Um, and moreover, information literacy takes a great role in the information age. We are no longer limited in sources. On the other hand, there are tons of sources provided on the internet. Therefore, we should always know how to make use of information by acquiring these skills. Moreover, I think um, the way we acquire this news is to practice more, because practice makes perfect. If we can grasp the literacy skill well, it can highly apply to our future study and benefits our work, since it is a skill that makes a person clarify his mind, his or her mind as well as extracts the useful information. Moreover, information literacy can develop one's critical thinking. At last, I have chosen social bookmarking as my topic to present here. Um, so social bookmarking is a new way of organizing and categorizing different sources. And moreover, Mm. Moreover, um, social bookmarking indeed broadens my horizon of collecting sites such, such as finding sites. I learned that social bookmarking is a new way of 
of categorizing different sources is a brand new way to organize information and resources. However, I, from what I have searched, I found that we should know that the user are from the use of based well tools. In this case, we will not have user directed. Therefore, users can easily make social connection with people who have the same interest. And through Learning Contract 2, I have integrated my own topic with my partner, Coco. And I found that um, since social bookmarking is applicable to most of the people, but we should also pay special attention on the tagging of the sources, which could be inaccurate. But after all, personally, I think it enriches my knowledge towards social bookmarking sites, and it greatly helped me to organize my own favorite sites by using this web tool. And here is what I'm using. I'm using Delicious as my daily web tools, which can help me to organize and to categorize my own sites. And I found it quite useful. This is another um, social bookmarking site called Open Box. So, so in this semester, we have been through three learning contracts, and I have made a ground to summarize. I think from learning contract one, we it involves our individual work, and in learning contract two, it involves our peer work. I think in learning contract three, it involves the group and team's work. And all together, together it requires a lot of different skills, uh, including uh, information literacy, collaboration, and a lot of things. I think it's a kind of gradually increasing process. And we have gained a lot of skills from it. Moreover, through this semester, we, have, we are asked to have in-class sharing, group sharing, and as, as well as in-class activities. And through all these activities, we are more capable to give a presentation because we need to we need to find out the the, the information and the, and prepare the script and all those things by practicing. We will be more um, familiar with presentation. And. Um, moreover, through learning culture one, two, three, we have enhanced our knowledge and as well as the teamwork spirit because we are more capable to understand each other's point of view. We can more easily address the problem and task more efficiently. And most importantly, from the teamwork, we can verify one and other's point of view and to see if our understanding is correct from the issues and the views of others can also be combined to the topics. So finally, um, I think uh, through this course, I have acquired a lot of learning skills, including the skill to analyze and solve complicated issues, such as the topic I have been through. And also through acquiring information literacy, we can, we can be more familiar with how to make use of critical thinking. And criti critical thinking through find, evaluate, and extract appropriate learning resources. Moreover, we have learned how to have a more mature communication and also our writing skill. So here is an overview of my own presentation. I think through this course, I have learned deeper knowledge of Web 2.0 in terms of different common web tools. And moreover, I, I think I, I can learn how to learn by my own more actively, which is from talk to learn to learn to learn. And at last, I think um, through all those work I have done, it enhances my own competency. Even though I'm not studying the web technology, 
because my, my major is communication. But I think it can also highly apply to my own study because all, um, because for example, information literacy is a kind of lifelong learning process. We should acquire it since we are in year one or year four or year even older. So thank you. Here is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. It's one of the most impressive presentations we ever heard, and it's very comprehensive. Now I know time, we just have three minutes left. Coco, do you want to try? Yes. Okay. So the last speaker of today, with all the speakers, let's see, it's you. and blogs and sometimes we 
we use the total sharing. Both of them are the function of the web 2.0. I have learned that the enclosed based learning. First, um, the problem statement. We we need to set our role, our goal to for our topic. What we need to investigate or what we need to research. And second, we need to collect our data. Then we need to analyze that is the data really useful in our research. And final, we need to give the conclusion of our analyze and we need to give a feedback for our research. I think it is we use in when we are writing our journal and proposal. Because in general, we also need to set the topic and we need to find the information on the internet. And finally, we need to analyze the data and start to write in our, our journal. Then proposal is, we need to, is we write the feedback what we have learned when we are writing our journals. Then I think it is a way to do a self-assessment. Then, final, I, I have learned teamwork when we work with my group members. Then, I have learned that, I have learned respect, respect our team members because it is important to hear their opinions and how to communicate how to communicate with our members and time management and combine the group members' ideas. Um, I'm the timekeeper in our group. Um, we need to have a good time management for do our project we need to, because we need to set a new day to finish our part and so that we can combine them before the submit day. After all, we need to give the feedback what we have learned in our project. If we don't have a good communication, it is difficult to for it is difficult for us grouping together when while we are busy. of a team is that um, we are working together although we have our own opinion we will combine both of the opinion to become our group idea and we will achieve our goal is for example to do the project then we can learn more up about the advantage from our group members. That's all. Thank you, CO, CO2Pro. We um, appreciate your loss and your effort to manage your PowerPoint so that we can give you this chance. Yes, thank you. Um, allow me to finish the attendance call and then you can go, okay? Basically, I know who are here today. We uh, still need to repeat the attendance call. Yes, Edison is not here today. Ah. Rita 
to the order is according to the not according to order. Okay? So let me make this up more. Yeah. That's it for today's CISG 114, section <laughs> one web technology and night, day number 27, week number 14. Okay?